Is Turkish Airlines economy supposed to like be better than business class? Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest and to the point narrated trip reports about flights and unique hotels all over the world. This is episode 145 and today we are finishing off my three leg journey from Bangkok to Rome with Turkish Airlines. Stick around, the full report begins in 10 seconds. Welcome to Istanbul's massive new airport. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid for this flight, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. I was actually a little bit worried about this transit. I have 5 or 6 hours before my next flight, but I did not have a visa to enter Turkey. I was coming off of a Gulf Air flight and connecting to a Turkish flight, with only carry-on baggage. This very specific set of circumstances is not covered in the Turkish FAQ section on their website and their call center refused to say if I would be okay without a visa, constantly referring me to contact the Turkish embassy. No thank you. Anyway, now I know, it was not necessary at all. There's a massive Turkish transfer desk as I was hoping for and they quickly issued my onwards boarding pass so I could get to the concourse in a matter of minutes. The very, very busy concourse. Hands down, this is the busiest that I've seen in an airport since before COVID. Turkish Airlines operates their hub in Istanbul using a flight bank system, and I was thrown into the mix of their busy 7 a.m. bank. Banks, by the way, are big chunks of flights all going in the same direction. Just for example, perhaps Turkish has 50 wide-body flights from Asia arriving between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., with limited departures during that time. And then they have 100 flights between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. flying onto Europe and North America with limited arrivals during that time. I navigated my way through the crowds and found my way to the Miles and Smiles Lounge. Turkish has two lounges here. One is for business class passengers and the other is for Star Alliance Gold passengers and the equivalent. Today, we're going to the latter but the two lounges are mirror copies of each other and both of them become overcrowded as departure banks approach. These lounges receive or at least received a lot of praise, but I've never really been a fan. As big as they are, they still don't have enough seating. The food is hit or miss, depending on the time that you're here, and generally what would otherwise be something I'd consider to be a nice design is negated by the fact that everything just feels pretty cheap. Despite having a great flight experience overall, these less than stellar facts about the lounge, I can freely tell you though, because this video, like all of my videos, is not sponsored by any airline that I'm flying. It's my belief that sponsored, unbiased reviews don't exist. So you can rest assured that today, you're only going to hear my own honest opinion because this flight is 100% self-funded. If you consider yourself to be a connoisseur of honest and authentic content on YouTube, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing with notifications on. Three things that truly do help the channel grow and let YouTube know that I'm producing quality content. If, however, you think the content is crap, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'm always open to feedback to make my videos better. Finally, my Patreon is also linked in the description below for those of you that would like to take this a step further. Many thanks in advance for stopping by. I found one of the coveted armchairs that have both apron views and convenient outlets. In this entire lounge, there are precisely four of them. Unfortunately, I needed to leave the lounge just before they were about to start baking off the pide. All right, time to head to the gate. Today, we'd be flying on an Airbus A321, one of 368 passenger aircraft in their massive fleet. I'm always equally impressed and surprised by how expansive the Turkish network is. They fly to a total of 340 destinations across the globe, making them the largest airline on Earth in terms of international destinations. They also have more non-stop destinations from a single airport than any other on Earth, connecting Istanbul to 126 countries. Can you imagine being crew for Turkish? 
the schedules come out and this month I'm going to be heading to Sao Paulo, Paris, Nuakchut, Malaga, Kathmandu and Mogadishu. Walking to the gate was like being a kid in a candy store, stopping every 20 feet or so to take pictures of aircraft that I really don't get to see that often. Spotting not one, not two, but three Uzbekistan Airways aircraft here at the same time. Our gate today was Bravo 6 Bravo. Admittedly, they could have done a better job at naming these gates. Our inbound aircraft was arriving late from Dusseldorf, but the turnaround was still pretty swift. Boarding was orderly and separated by boarding group. Our gate had a whopping five gate agents who came around and checked IDs while we were all standing in line and stamped our boarding cards, making boarding all the faster once it actually started. Let's take a look at today's flight stats, shall we? We'd be taking off almost a half hour late and make our way to Rome at a snail's pace for our two hour flight, landing five minutes early. Insane how padded these schedules are. Take off 24 minutes late, fly at just 400 knots and still land five minutes early. I was first on board and would be sitting amongst a crew that was deadheading to Rome. Something that is quite common at Turkish Airlines I've heard. Our crew had just worked the Dusseldorf turn and their duty hours would time out by the time it was time to return to Istanbul from Rome. So rather than put my crew up in a hotel in Rome for the night, a second crew is flown out to work the return flight. While most European and European adjacent carriers use a business class product that is comprised of economy seats with a blocked middle seat, Turkish has proper business class seats a la US domestic first class on all of their narrow body aircraft the older version of it on my aircraft today. For today's flight, I selected 8 Alpha, which was a $30 add-on at the time of booking for the expansive legroom that I had. While it is just a standard economy seat, it is just about as good as you're going to get on any narrow body aircraft. Not super slim, an adjustable headrest, personal IFE, USB charging and the like. The headphones are the standard crappy economy ones though, which I, I guess makes sense since we're in economy. As we push back, let's talk about today's crew and why I'm labeling this flight as Redemption. I had two Turkish Airlines business class flights earlier this year. Both of them are on the channel. I thought the short flight from Paris was decent, but my long haul flight to Saigon was nothing special at all. With bad food and a cold crew that left me feeling TK was just overhyped. Today was entirely different. My crew today clearly enjoyed their job, and that really is the end all for me in terms of whether or not a crew is good. During boarding, the crew standing near my section were trying to guess each passenger's language and welcome them on board accordingly. They were warm, friendly, and just overall pleasant from gate to gate. We'd be following an Iran Air A310, the only one in their fleet, and an aircraft that I would love to be able to fly on someday, as they departed to Tehran. For us, we'd be taking off due south and then heading to the west. The spool up and take off coming up next.
I had an opportunity to look through the entertainment on offer. Turkish has a whopping 274 movies on offer, broken down into the categories on your screen now. Pretty impressive. Not nearly as impressive as the lunch service though. If you saw my video from Istanbul to Saigon in business class, you may notice that this is the exact same meal that I had on that flight, except that this chicken was actually juicy and flavorful and overall a, a, an amazing meal for a two hour economy flight. It was certainly in the lick your plate clean category and my seatmate even offered me her yogurt after witnessing mine disappear which I politely declined. I was going to try to get into the history of Turkish Airlines in this video, but it seems like it was too short for that as we're already overflying the western coast of Italy and beginning our approach into Rome. Before I started this channel, I flew Turkish Airlines twice, both on shorter haul European routes. Both were in economy and both were fantastic just like today's flight. So it just has me wondering, is there some way by design that economy is supposed to be better than business class? Is the intention to offer an above average economy class and a below average business class? Is there a business case to be made for this? Or is this just the luck of the draw and the food was the same because, well, it's chicken and rice. After all, Korean air serves bibimbap in, in economy, business and first class, and it's all essentially the same stuff. I don't know honestly, but because of it, I will certainly not be hesitant to use Turkish on short haul flights like this in the future. We landed and I went in search of what I really do hope was my last ever COVID test, which I would need to board my cruise. And that is that. Time to get into the flip flop score. Fantastic experience all around. The only thing that I can knock it for just a little bit is that the aircraft wasn't the newest, but not a problem. And the ticket overall was just pretty pricey. There were a few options between Istanbul and Rome for me in this case, and I just couldn't stomach a third layover, which would have been in Belgrade as my other option was Air Serbia. Anyway, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. I'll see you next time at the Hotel Chapter Roma.